I'm the co-organizer of this of the meetup group, uh, Cloud BI Tel Aviv, and uh, that's my co-organizer in the back, uh, Omid. And thank you for coming. Do you hear me? Great. And there's more chairs. In my work at in data analytics, I see the importance of having a clear connection between the data operations and the business goals of the company. Data is an interesting crossfield in the sense that it has a very strong technological component as well as a very strong business component and it's it really sits at the at the intersection of two fields because the field has so many tech parts it's easy to just focus on the technology without having to worry about the business the business elements the business aspect but this perspective gives the data itself much less value as Julie Mumford, the Director of Recommendations at Nike, said to me, data is a liability. It costs money to collect it, store it, and query it. And it doesn't provide value to the company in and of itself. But insight, the insight you get from, from the data, that's the asset. That brings value. As people who work with data, our jobs are to transform the data as a cost and a burden of the company into into value for the company. And to do that, we need to have a strong understanding of the connection between the business goals and how they are related to the data operations. Asaf here and the next speaker, Eyal, are experts at relating data to business. Uh, we are privileged to have them here tonight to share their perspective with us. Asaf is the head of business analytics at Selena, the rising Airbnb for digital nomads. And in April, they raised $100 million in funding. Uh, and they have an $850 million dollar valuation at this point, so they're poised to disrupt the industry. Um, he comes with years of business, uh, business and data experience, having previously served as a product analytics director at Tabula, director of data science at Convert Media, and as a business analyst at Rafael. Okay. Do you need enough, or I also need a microphone? You don't need a mic. Honest people can't hear you. Now can you hear me? Okay, so I want to talk uh, more about myself. I'll just jump into uh, the presentation. So as uh, um, she mentioned, I'm Asaf. I joined Selena three months ago. And I will tell you a little bit about business analytics in Selena, a little bit about the company. Um, yeah, so the agenda for today, as mentioned, I will talk a little bit about what is Selena, what do we do? Uh, what is tech doing in Selena? Because uh, Selena is not a tech company, so why do we even um, need tech or an R&D center? Um, I will talk about business analytics in Selena, <coughs> and then I will talk about a few challenges and use cases uh, regarding, <coughs> sorry, I lost my voice, um, uh, of business analytics challenges and use cases in Selena. And this is just a nice photo from uh, one of our locations in Costa Rica. <laughs> okay, so first of all, just some general numbers about Selena. Um, these numbers are uh, the numbers that we are expected to reach by Q4 of uh, 2019. Um, we're supposed to have around 90 properties, uh, 21,000 beds in 70 different cities, 25 different countries, and um, we're 2,100 employees. Um, and what uh, that we do, we are a hospitality company, but very important, we are an experienced company. This is something I will talk about a little bit more um, in the next part of the, uh, of the presentation. And uh, a lot of uh, effort is taken into connecting people in our, um, in our locations. Um, hospitality is a hotel skill, what is hospitality? Yeah, hospitality is hotels or any, Airbnb is not hotel, but it's also hospitality. Um, Okay, so this is the Selena um, hospitality ecosystem. What kind of product and what kind of stuff do we offer uh, uh, our guests to do um, in our locations? So we have three um, main products, which are hospitality, the accommodation, people actually staying like in every hotel or hostel. Um, we also have co-working spaces for people who want to work in the Selena, similar like we work in, in um, other co-working spaces. And we have the food and beverages, which are also a very important part of Selena. Uh, all the bars and the restaurants we have um, in the locations. And what's interesting is that we also have a lot of locally curated offerings, 
a lot of other offerings we have for our guests that are in the locations. And we have wellness centers for, I don't know, yoga and, and stuff like that. We have a lot of activities around education and music and art. We have a music festival going through different um, locations. We have an, a, a very interesting education program. For example, you can take a three month coding uh, course in one of our locations and stay uh, in Senina throughout the course. Um, a lot of uh, efforts around impact, around um, Selena giving back to the local communities where the locations are. Um, I will also get to it later in the presentation, but for example, every employee can, um, can and should actually uh, give back to the community four hours each month uh, um, uh, in, every, in every location, and also in the different headquarters. Um, retail and travel, so we have travel centers in many of our locations where we offer tours and, and transportation between, um, between our locations. And we have a lot of uh, locations with surf and explore centers. Um, you can take surfing lessons and surfing um, equipment and um, offerings around that. So this is, the, this is the Selena ecosystem. This is all the different products uh, we offer in, in our locations. And so what is the unique uh, uh, thing about Selena? So this is this nice graph uh, shows different hospitality um, players and where are they on a scale of experience and scale. So as you can see, we have Airbnb and the traditional um, budget hotels where the, uh, the scale is very high, but the level of experience uh, they offer the guests is, is very low. In Airbnb, for example, there's no experience. You just stay uh, uh, in, in, the, um, in the accommodation. Um, versus uh, um, boutique hotels or lifestyle uh, hotels where you get a high level of experience, but it's usually uh, uh, very boutique and on a very small scale. Um, what Selena is aiming to, to offer is a big chain in, in large scale where you can actually uh, travel in, in between different locations from Selena to Selena um, and become a member and, and stuff like that, um, but also provide a very high level of experience. So this is kind of uh, um, the way we, we see ourselves. Um, how do we do that? How do we scale very fast and open new Selenas all the time? Um, so Selena has what is called like a growth machine uh, where we very f uh, in a very fast pace find new locations. We have a lot of market research resources put into that um, to find uh, um, places where we can convert them very uh, efficiently and very fast into Selenas. Um, then we have the conversion stage and then we are opening uh, them to, to operate as Selenas. This entire process is now can take between three to six months, which is very fast, and this is what's uh, allowing us to grow very fast. Um, so this is another aspect of the uh, unique offering of Selena. Um, this is our growth strategy. Um, you can see 2017, 2018 ended with 10,000 beds, and by the end of 2019, we are expected to grow more than uh, two times. Um, so during 2018, the R&D center was open. I will talk uh, in the next slide what are we doing in the, in the R&D center. And only three months ago during 2019, the business analytics team was created. So the idea is that as the uh, Selena grows and has more and more uh, locations, we need more tech resources and more um, business analytics resources to support that growth. Um, and uh, I will talk about it now. Okay, so this is our R&D center in Tel Aviv. Um, a lot of questions I get is why do we need um, an R&D center in a hospitality company? So the different um, products or areas of responsibility we have uh, in the tech center are um, the Selena website and the Selena uh, application. Um, everything around the different information systems used to operate um, Selena. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of uh, in different uh, operational and information systems for pretty much everything you can imagine. <laughs> um, from booking and uh, reservation uh, systems and to very, very niche uh, um, systems to collect uh, guest uh, reviews, 
to uh, manage leads of uh, real estate, um, many, many systems and the management of them from both an IS and IT aspect are in the R&D center. We have kind of a third track, which is innovation, how to use uh, tech innovation to improve uh, um, the operational aspects of uh, managing Selenas. Uh, I will give a very nice example later in the presentation of how we use smart wristbands uh, in one of the locations now in a pilot. Um, so this is uh, another um, example. Do you all want to <laughs> come inside? You can sit or whatever, just to see the, the presentation. There is room here. Okay, so two other responsibilities that are currently in the R&D center are BI and BA, which is what we're talking about here in, the, um, in this meetup. Um, in Selena, the, what differentiates BI and BA is BI are responsible to taking all the different data uh, sources, all the different information systems, and make the data in them um, available for analysis. And the business uh, analytics group, uh, my group, is responsible for everything since uh, the data becomes uh, available for analysis. Um, yeah, so now I'll talk a little bit more about um, business analytics in Selena. So our main goal is to promote a data-driven culture in Selena. Um, and the idea is for us to work with all the different departments in Selena, and I mean all of them. Um, and I will talk a little bit about each and every one of them. So the operations department is the department where most of the manpower of Selena is uh, under. Um, we have the, uh, the, um, the country managers, the location managers, and all the uh, location employees uh, in the operations group. And this group is managing and operating all the uh, live and operating Selenas. We have the product group. Uh, when I'm talking about product here, I'm not talking about the technological product that I talked about in the, in the previous slide. I'm talking about the uh, um, physical products, um, the co-working spaces, the, uh, the rooms themselves, the bars and restaurants, the surf uh, centers, the travel centers. Each uh, uh, physical product in Selena is being managed as a, a product across all the different locations for um, efforts like uh, standardization and uh, um, um, optimization across all the different um, Selenas. Marketing and sales are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, revenue management is the group in Selena that is in charge of uh, pricing of the rooms. Uh, this is a very important team uh, that we need to, to work with on uh, optimizing all the, all the pricing processes. Um, we have the strategy or the market research um, group, which I talked about before. This group is very important. They help the real estate hunters and the business development people to find the best locations um, to open new Selenas. And they also work a lot on estimating uh, the value of the, uh, of the locations um, and provide a lot of insights around what should be the room division and stuff like that. And we also have the experience team. As I mentioned, uh, experience is very important in Selena. We have a full department um, dedicated for that. And this is also something that we'll cover a little bit more um, in the case studies. So what is our vision and strategy in Selena? Um, what does it mean to promote a data-driven culture? Um, so we really want to improve all different aspects of the data collection in Selena and the quality, the width, and the depth. When I'm talking about depth, I'm talking about, let me see. Oh, I'm not explaining it later, sorry, explain it now. Um, so width means that we need data on more of our guests. Uh, uh, this is also something I will talk about a little bit later, but we want to know more about uh, more of our guests. Um, so these are the width and the depth. And in terms of quality, um, a person that is giving us his details, but the details are wrong, uh, is also and not providing us value. So we really want to um, find ways to improve all the different aspects of the data collection. Uh, we want to increase data availability or data democratization, as some people call it. We want to expose more data to more of the different employees to make it uh, usable in the uh, different decision-making processes they do. Uh, this is a mutual goal with uh, our BI team. 
Uh, we want to become a part of the decision-making processes in the different departments I mentioned. The idea is that the different analysts will be really uh, a part of these uh, departments. Uh, we want to recommend different uh, uh, performance improvements um, in the different locations and product areas, and we also want to initiate and lead data science project. This is something that is starting now in our department, but maybe later on will be a different department. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, go to the Tachles, to the different uh, um, challenges we have and uh, um, some use cases around that. Um, okay, so for analysis and optimization, we really need to collect more data and more for guests. Um, but we have a lot of challenges around that um, that I want to talk about here. Um, for example, when any of you is going to a hotel with a partner as a couple, Usually only one of you is uh, registering or checking in in, in most countries. Uh, it, it's, it looks very uh, uh, um, not interesting to you, but for us as business analysts, it means that we're losing 50% of the data. Um, and this, uh, this is actually worse in some of the other uh, uh, processes uh, of checking in Selena. For example, uh, a group of people coming into dormitories and stuff like that, and then we can lose even more than 50% of the data. And then when we want to, to know who, who is our target audience um, and, and many other uh, um, analysis that we want to run, we can do it in, in the level of accuracy um, that we would want. Um, a second problem is that we can't attribute all the revenue or actually all the activity that guests are uh, um, doing in our locations um, to specific guests. So we have the guests that actually checked in in the Selena, but when they go to a bar or restaurant and they pay in cash, we can't connect uh, this activity to the specific guest. And this is again uh, um, a very uh, significant data loss for us. Um, and I will talk about different ways we can um, address that. Um, so intentionally I'm not taking here into account different operational solutions because operations is always a bit complicated. So we can say that we can just ask the people in the, um, in the check-in uh, uh, desks to collect data on all the people in the, in the uh, check-in process, but it will probably won't happen. It's not a standard. Uh, it adds a lot of work for them. Um, so we are mostly looking into tech solutions. We are part of the um, R&D center, so this is easier for us. Um, so one option is the Selena app to make this app uh, uh, used in additional processes, not only to book uh, uh, a new tree, but also for the check-in process or for paying in the different um, uh, places in the Selena, and then we can uh, attribute more of the uh, revenue and collect more of the data in a more accurate way. Uh, another nice uh, um, option that I will talk about now is the smart wristbands. We are working with a, a, an Israeli company actually called Smartag. Um, I don't know if anyone of here uh, watched 2025, um, the bad reality show and <coughs> where they pay with uh, wristbands. Um, so they also worked uh, uh, there. Um, and this is actually the, the, um, the solution we started with. Um, we have a pilot lab right now in Bocas, in Panama, and I will talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so we have the Smart Response pilot. Uh, as mentioned, it was launched in May in Bocas. Um, all our guests receive Smart Response to open their doors um, instead of the, uh, the traditional room keys or room card they had. Um, and each guest was offered the option to open a tab and pay for uh, food and beverages in our bars and restaurants using the, the wristband. Um, and there are two uh, um, important notes I want to make about that. So first of all, we can now attribute F&B uh, food and beverages sales and revenue to guests, which is very nice. Um, and we have some initial insights based on uh, very small amounts of data, but I think some of it actually makes sense. Uh, we see that men spend much more than women. Um, men account for only 50% of our guests, but 70% of 75% uh, of the revenue. 
Uh, we saw that uh, German and American guests spend twice as much as other guests on beer. They drink a lot in, in Bocas. Um, we see that young guests, 22 and under, spend 40% 40 40 more on alcohol than other guests. Um, and again, this data is very, very valuable for us. Um, actually, it's not in the presentation, but just a, a few uh, days ago, we talked about, uh, uh, we talked about this in, with our F&B department, uh, the F&B product department, and we asked them, uh, we are a new team, so a lot of the different analytical process were already in place when we joined, um, but we asked them, how do they build a menu in a, in a new location? And they told us that what they do is they check the, um, the geographical distribution of the guests in that uh, area, and then they build uh, uh, the menu according to that. So for example, if they know that a lot of the uh, guests in this area are American, they will provide uh, more food items that are American food, because Americans usually eat American food everywhere they go. Um, and uh, according to that, you have additional uh, insights on, on each uh, um, on each origin country, um, and in this case, we will be able to actually uh, check the, the the trends and the distribution of guests in each location and improve the menu on an ongoing basis. So this really opens a lot of room for um, analysis and optimization. Um, and the second note I wanted to make, and this will lead me to, to our next challenge, is how can we actually estimate the impact of such feature, like the smart wristbands, on our business KPI? Um, are we able to run A-B tests? Um, let's see. Okay, so this slide is not very optimistic because we have a lot of issues with all the different options we have to actually um, analyze the, the impact on our business KPIs. Um, just as a, uh, as a um, general note, so for every feature like the smart wristbands, and we have additional features like that, um, we start with a pilot in one location, in one Selena, and then we expand gradually. Um, and these are the different options we have to actually um, estimate the, the business effect. So we can try to run an A-B test, which means we can ask the operational team in the location to randomly split the guests and into groups and then for example, the smart wristbands for one group uh, give them the wristbands and for the other group uh, don't give them the wristbands. Um, this is actually a pretty bad option. First of all, it relies on operations, which as I mentioned is uh, very problematic. The people in the locations uh, um, are very uh, um, busy in their day-to-day. -day. Uh, uh, this opens a lot of room for uh, operational uh, difficulties and issues around that. Um, and the, the more severe problem is that it can't be a clean A-B test because our guests uh, interact with each other. So let's say we, we will take 50%, give them the wristbands, and 50% that we don't give the wristbands. The people without the wristbands will see those with the wristband. They can ask for it, they can ask questions, they can uh, um, have a lot of uh, um, issues around that. Um, so that's not a good option. Another uh, common option is doing a before and after analysis. Um, just compare the results before and after the pilot. Um, this is also not a very good option for us. Uh, if, the, um, if the performance was stable, we could have tried that, but seasonality is very, very significant, even between different weeks in uh, the hospitality uh, um, ecosystem. And that is not a, a very good uh, uh, solution. Um, and also it's not accurate enough to catch relatively small effects. So when you do a before and after, it, it is usually, it can be a good way to spot very drastic changes that uh, uh, exceeds the seasonality. But if you want to see changes like five or 10% or everything within the, the, um, the seasonality, uh, you won't be really able to, to see it. Okay, another uh, solution we can try is a comparative analysis. Very similar to the before and after, but we can try to eliminate the seasonality by comparing uh, uh, between uh, uh, the Selena uh, where the pilot is live and uh, similar Selenas outside the pilot. Um, so the good thing here is that we are actually trying to handle the seasonality issue, um, but we're still having a lot of uh, problems around that. First of all, it's not always easy to find a similar enough Selena even if it's in the same country, 
uh, in the same scale, there might be very, very significant uh, differences in other aspects. Um, so that, that's not always uh, easy. And same as I mentioned for the before and after, this is also many times uh, not accurate enough to catch uh, um, the kind of changes that we want to track. Um, so I don't have any optimistic uh, um, saying about this issue. This is something that we are still trying to, to understand and see how we can improve the way we, we analyze these kind of features. Um, yeah. Okay, so another uh, interesting challenge we have in Selena is how do we measure experience? As I mentioned, um, guest experience is very important for us. Uh, we allocate a lot of resources into measuring it per Selena and over time. Um, but the question is how can we do that? And experience is very complicated, it has a lot of components. Um, so our experience team actually built an aggregated uh, experience API called the BI, the Brand Experience Index, uh, which is kind of uh, uh, aggregating a lot of other KPIs into one um, KPI. Um, <laughs> it looks like this, which is very, uh, um, very overwhelming at the beginning, because it is really based on a lot of different uh, uh, measures we have. Um, yeah, so I will go over a few of them. But basically, what the experience team did was sitting with a lot of uh, um, different stakeholders in Selena and kind of understanding how each component should be uh, weighed in the uh, overall uh, um, score. And each uh, part of this uh, KPI is being measured in a, in a different way. Um, I will just sh give you a few examples. First of all, this is an example of how the score looks when you actually put numbers into it. Um, and now let's uh, see specific examples. Okay, so stuff like the, the basics, like shower experience and all the other basics, it's pretty easy. You can just uh, uh, see the satisfaction rate for guests uh, um, that stayed in, uh, in the Salinas. Um, we have it in, in, uh, in many different uh, um, places like Booking and Expedia and TripAdvisor and places like this, and we have a company collecting this data for us and uh, translating it into um, satisfaction rate. What's so, this target? So they also added a target for, we wanted it to have at least 85% uh, um, satisfaction rate in shower experience for the experience to be good. Um, they used benchmarks and a lot of uh, analysis around that. Um, and you also have like a score of one to five um, <coughs> based on the uh, level of uh, satisfaction. Um, community impact. Okay, so as I mentioned, each employee should, uh, can and should uh, uh, give back to the community 2% of his uh, hours. Uh, this is in the location and also in the different headquarters. And this is also something we measure as a way to, to um, measure the overall uh, experience in the Serena. Okay, local engagement is actually pretty interesting. One of the things that we, we want to measure is that not only people that are Selena guests are actually uh, uh, interacting with Selena. And um, we want to know that actually people from outside uh, that are locals are also coming to enjoy uh, the different activities we have in the, in the Selena, we want people to engage with the locals. And the way we measure it is checking how much of our F&B revenue is coming from non-guests. Um, this is something we, we check uh, uh, whenever uh, a person pays for F&B. Um, they must say if they are guests or non-guests, and this is something we check. And we want the 25% of our activity will come from locals, from people, uh, locals or from other hotels. Uh, uh, to see that uh, our guests can interact with people outside of Selena. Loyalty. Um, loyalty is actually pretty complicated um, and we are still trying to find ways to, um, to measure it properly, but the idea is to see uh, um, that people actually want to come back to Selena after they stayed with us and that we are able to create uh, um, loyalty within our guests. Um, because people don't travel Latin America every few months, it's very hard to measure loyalty 
in in a, in a reasonable uh, scale of time, but there are other ways to try to to estimate this effect. And we also have a lot of uh, competitive data, checking our occupancy uh, um, versus our comp our competition in a specific uh, uh, Selena in a specific time. Um, just to see how we are doing uh, versus our competition. This is also uh, a very important part of the brand experience index. <coughs> okay, so I have to say that we are hiring. Um, <laughs> these are our different data positions. We have a lot of positions not in, in data, but we're looking for analysts, we're looking for big data developers. Um, Feel free to, to reach out to me in LinkedIn or in any one other way if you're interested. Um, and questions? These are my dogs. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'm actually not a big fan of this uh, uh, differentiation, and for me, it's pretty much the same. Um, no, really. Um, the idea that business analysts will work closer with the business and that data analysts may be a little bit more into the, the tech side. Um, but for me, it's the same. It's just two positions Asaf, that are very similar. Yeah. Just repeat the question for the camera. Ah, please. Sorry, she asked what is the difference between a business analyst and a data analyst. And I said that for me, it's not important. Uh, um, you can disregard the difference. Yeah. Can you share a bit about the data the, the documentation process you guys have? Like, how do you make it accessible? How people use it in the day to day activities? How you design your KPI? How, not KPI, but like the metrics you look at, you look at in order to achieve your KPI. Okay, so he asked how are we doing our data? Um, democratization process, how do we uh, uh, share data with more people and, and different questions around that. Um, okay, so first of all, in terms of tools, we have a self-serve BI tool named Looker, which I don't know if anyone here knows about, but I didn't know about it before um, I joined Selena. Uh, this is just the technical aspect. In terms of how do we decide uh, what do we want to, to expose and how do we prioritize the different KPIs and stuff like that, and first of all, it's a process. We are talking with a lot of departments. We're talking with a lot of people and trying to understand what are the most important uh, um, KPIs to to share and to start building into our um, dashboards. Um, so actually, we mapped our three top uh, areas of uh, three KPIs areas uh, that we want to share. So one of them is actually the brand experience index. This is something. Uh, that is very important and interesting for uh, um, a lot of people in Selena. And the second one are growth metrics, uh, um, everything around how many uh, beds are in progress and how many beds are uh, in the signing progress and stuff like that. And the third one are just different uh, business KPIs like um, occupancy, revenue, revenue in different, uh, um, different breakdowns. Um, and I don't know if that's answered the question, but yeah, it's mostly just working with the different departments, becoming a part of these departments. What we aim to do is actually have the analyst really become a part of the business process in each department, uh, really get to know uh, uh, what are their goals and what are the day-to-day the -day that uh, um, is most important for them and build the dashboards around that. The responsibility of the dashboard is solely on the analytics team. Yeah. For now. Yeah. Hi. I, I, I was wondering if uh, uh, if there is like a vacancy. If you are open for for analysts mm -hmm. that are that are that come from from fr from uh, like other. Uh, Prepositions like HR analyst or analytics and stuff, not and 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 learned on their own, uh, like uh, like Python or or other tools by by themselves. If it's a hiring question, you can just come after and I will share all the details with you about what we're looking for and what kind of profiles and stuff like that. Uh, 
I would love to. Yeah. Okay, I have a question. So, um, regarding like, many of the insights you uh, gather an insight from the guests, okay, and afterwards you want to improve it, like to offer like other stuff. But as we know from hospitality, uh, while the guest is in Selena, he can uh, improve his uh, stay and like uh, get like, a better like ranking. So what about like CRM systems that can allow you during the stay to uh, analyze, you know, to get uh, an insight? And That's a very good question things. actually. Um, it's very hard to collect feedback on the guest experience during the stay. Uh, there are a few technological uh, um, solutions to kind of communicate uh, with the staff using like different apps and stuff like that, and then you can collect real-time data and improve while the, the guest is staying there. Uh, I think one of them is called Alice, which I know we talked about. Also, Wautier, also Wautier, we had a pilot with them. Um, so there are a few solutions for that um, that we are checking, but I think this is the best uh, we can do. We will not uh, uh, develop something like that on our own. Uh, we are just trying different tools, uh, but I agree it's, it's really important to find ways to, to collect uh, feedback on, on guests during their stay, before the, before the damage is done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who formulated them? So it's the experience team, which is their uh, um, expertise. Uh, they are all very um, experienced with uh, um, experience with experience. Yeah. Um, I can say that this is this should be the final uh, way we, we look at this. I, I think we should still analyze the effectiveness of this KPI and see how it is correlated to other business KPIs and stuff like that. And maybe we need to change the weights uh, with time. Um, this is the initial proposal that they had and we are working like this for a few months now. Um, but I agree we should keep optimizing this uh, KPI and see that it actually uh, measuring what we want. So, as I mentioned, first of all, we can see how it is correlated to other success metrics that different locations have, um, like the financial one, the business one, uh, um, and we f and we need to see if it actually makes sense over time. If we see a drop or an increase in this KPI, does it really uh, um, indicate something important to to handle and stuff like that? I know that we are already trying to, to figure out a few things here. Maybe the weights are too high for some of the uh, um, components and stuff like that. It's a work in progress. This is just the beginning. But yeah, I agree we shouldn't just look at this like uh, um, these are the facts. The no, but this, first of all, this entire KPI is being, is being measured each month for all the locations. And we can check the feedback from guests who stayed in this month. It actually, feedback is uh, streaming all the time uh, into our systems. I was waiting for someone to say that. We it's know it sums up to 102, <laughs> and this is uh, on purpose. It's 98. No, it's 102, <laughs> as far as I know. It's 50 plus 40. So it's 98? No, it's 100. <laughs> no, the, ho the, whole thing, the whole thing is... The whole thing should be 102. Yeah. Is that a question or...? <laughs> no, I mean, small question, it's not, not a question. Uh, okay. Uh, why the scales are different uh, when you show that each one, later on you show which one? The scale is different? Yeah. For example, one is it's from the 90 same. to 100. Oh, it's just no. On another slide, it's seven, nine. Right, because it's different uh, KPIs, so the scale is very different. Satisfaction rate is up to a hundred percent. Community hours is the average number of hours each employee uh, uh, contributed. Um, local engagement is also out of a hundred. Um, loyalty, we have a seven percent target because just a benchmark of what is the average loyalty rate. In hospitality, each of them just have a different scale. Uh, in every case, you take the average? Not the average. We take some kind of benchmark and we create a target uh, around that. And then 
we s we have different uh, um, um, scores based on where are you versus the target for each KPI. And how do you measure retention? So I mentioned this is one of the difficult one to to measure because uh, uh, people don't come back to to uh, uh, stay in hotels every uh, other uh, month and stuff like that. I don't know. This, what I'm interested in is the loyalty for Selena. So I don't care if they went to another hotel. Um, maybe. So this is actually a good point. We can try to profile the different guests and see who is more likely to come back and then focus on them and stuff like that. This is part of the different uh, ideas for solutions we have to, to actually measure this. I know. We're missing a lot of data, of course. But yeah, this is a good point. Um, profiling the guests based on, on how they uh, tend to, to travel. Hey. Hi. So you can... Probably like from uh, newspapers and you can know what, what's the... So I didn't hear it. From newspapers from and newspapers. from other researchers, you know what's the average length of uh, uh, guest stays in... Length of stay? Yeah, in hotels and like how is Selena compared to... <coughs> are they staying shorter time than other hotels? How the length of stay versus... I don't remember if it's actually part of this KPI we have. The price, the occupancy, no, we don't have the length of stay versus um, competition. Um, I, most of the people who stay in hotels actually stay very short uh, periods of time in most hotels, like day or two or three. Um, in Selena, it's a bit different because it is built for longer trips, so I don't know if it's really fair to compare it to, um, to the uh, hospitality uh, um, average. Um, and we also have both dormitories and private rooms, which is very different in terms of length of stay. Um, but yeah, this is something we're, we're tracking and analyzing. Uh, I can talk to you about it more if, if it's interesting too. Yeah. Is there a Selena in Israel? We'll, we'll, we'll soon have one, actually. <laughs> we'll have one in a vet sedek uh, in November, the first one to be open in Israel, and also in the Sea of Galilee in no, actually, I don't remember when, in October, November, yeah. So by the end of the year, we will have two Selenas in Israel, which is nice. Um, can I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so data, data collection is quite a sensitive topic recently. So I'm it's wondering... It's very sensitive. Huh? <laughs> it is very sensitive. Yeah, so I'm wondering, <laughs> is there an option to opt out from data collection? And second question is, um, is there an option for, for guests guest to, to opt out? Yeah, um, we can't from starting data collection, okay? Regarding the registration and stuff, it's like... And Are the you familiar with the GDPR okay. and all the stuff around yes, that? Yes, but yes. about drinks and the food that I eat and that kind of stuff. So do you reveal to a client, for example, if I want to know, uh, what data you collect about me and how are you using it? Do you provide any? any when you get a wristband or when you check into every hotel actually and leave your details, you are actually uh, signing in that you're that we can collect this data. Uh, if you don't want to leave any data, I have no idea actually how it goes in the checking process. Um, but I think you can opt out of of having your data in our systems. Uh, we are like GDPR compliant yeah. and stuff like that, but I'm actually not very much in the legal details. Uh, around that. But they shouldn't. <laughs> Did you have another question? Or only? Uh, I just live in the I was wondering where in the are you guys going to open? Next to Abramovich. In Abramovich. Hey, your heart. I didn't hear your question. What? Nothing. Actually, I wanted to ask about BA and BI. Okay. Uh, you people, I'm from the tech side. Uh, you people have a saying, you, your version of be careful what you wish for, you might get it, right? If you measure something, you'll get an inside problem, okay. right? Um, uh, what Maria said about how do you um, slice the, the cake? Okay. Uh, where's, the, where's the data driven if people just uh, pick these numbers out of thin air 
And another question, you repeat no, the digits. No, they actually explained how we measure each part of O, or didn't understand your question. Not the measurement, the insight. Because if you measure it, you'll get... We don't only measure it, of course. There is a group of people in the experience team that are actually analyzing this data on a monthly basis uh, and, and extracting insights. And you didn't give insights. us much about how do you correlate the bottom line with these measurements? How do you decide the target should be 105 instead of... So a lot of this wasn't done by the BA team. We will be involved in optimizing this KPI and actually checking how effective it is and stuff like that. Um, we didn't get to do everything you asked uh, uh, now, but of course we need to. We need to see that this KPI is, is effective, uh, that uh, uh, changes in this KPI make sense, that it actually uh, generates insights that are actionable and stuff like makes that. Makes business sense also. Because also makes business sense. Involved in <coughs> moving uh, the yeah, KPIs. I mentioned one of the stuff we want to do is actually check the correlation between the brand index and the different components versus different uh, uh, business KPIs to see that it actually correlates uh, and measures what what we want. An another question: you you mentioned you repeatedly you said uh, about some metrics that they are hard to to measure. How to measure? Right. If the signal to noise is. You know, if, if, the if they're how yes. to measure, then maybe they're not important. They maybe there's important. no signal. No, no. If they're how to measure, if you don't get enough signal, maybe it's because loyalty is not a, an interesting no, metric. No, actually, point. loyalty yeah. is very important in the hospitality so, world. So why but doesn't it show in in the statistics, in the numbers? It's a bit complicated to explain okay. because we we did try to measure it in different ways, but it doesn't always make sense. I just just for an example, um, an hotel which is near an, an airport, a lot of people will come back to it because it is near the airport. Uh, because they will start and end their uh, trips in this country. Uh, <coughs> but it doesn't really mean that uh, guests are more loyal to it. So the, the, um, the common ways to check loyalty are probably not very effective in this case, but we need to find other ways to, to measure it. Maybe the data is saying to you location, 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 instead of loyalty. Location is important, but it's not related to, to loyalty. We can talk about that uh, uh, more if you want. Uh, There's a break now, so anyone who has questions can uh, approach him. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Someone.